So I want to address a comment that I got recently. I was talking to someone and they said, Bert, I don't need to worry about SQL injection because I use an ORM. So ORMs, or Object Relation Mapping Tools, uh, are generally, you know, pretty divisive in the database world. And while we could debate the pros and cons of whether ORMs are worth using in our databases and applications, I don't want to focus on that today. What I do want to focus is on that comment that's saying just because you use an ORM, you're not vulnerable to SQL injection because that is not true. So let's look at three different ways that an ORM might cause a SQL injection attack to happen. And the first way is through programmatically put together ad hoc SQL queries. So ORMs typically try to abstract having to get data out of the database for you, uh, but that doesn't mean that that's the only way to do it. Many ORMs like Entity Framework will have methods in them that will let a user just write an ad hoc query against the database and return that data, map it to some model or whatever. The problem with this is, is this is exactly kind of the classic example of SQL injection where if a user starts concatenating unsanitized input variables to a SQL query and then allowing the ORM to you know, generate a query and execute it on the SQL server, we're gonna be vulnerable to injection attacks. And so another way you might be vulnerable is through the use of stored procedures. If you can execute an ad hoc SQL statement, there's nothing stopping you from executing a stored procedure. A developer can format and parameterize and correctly use a stored procedure using an ORM but that doesn't mean that it's not injectable. And it's not anything to do with the, with the ORM itself or the developer, right? Uh, so it's a little misleading to say this is the ORM's fault. It's really the user's fault if they're not sure what that stored procedure is doing. Or a DBA shouldn't you know, blindly write some really bad dynamic SQL query in a stored procedure, assuming that the developer is going to you know, clean up any input and sanitize it and so forth. Having good security is really hard and it's rarely a one-step solution, right, that solves our problems, like SQL injection in this case. So for our final example of where an ORM might fail you and actually allow SQL injection, well, it isn't an, an example of SQL injection at all. It's actually an example of ORM injection. So just like SQL injection, if you're using dynamic statements to build your ORM commands, in this example I'm showing you now, we're using dynamic link to construct our query that's gonna run in our ORM and uh, map our data back to us. If those link extension methods are assembled dynamically um, right, and are capturing user input and you, they're not being sanitized or what's going into there, it is possible that you're actually gonna get an, a link injection attack, which what happens then is your SQL code will execute just like you told it to and you're gonna reveal data or whatever else a malicious user might wanna try to do. The point is that all of these are vulnerabilities in a way that an ORM is still gonna allow SQL injection to occur on your database if you're not coding uh, for it appropriately. So that's it in a nutshell. It's not an exhaustive list. I'm sure there's other ways people can think of uh, to inject using an ORM. If you wanna learn more, I'm actually speaking at the Group by online conference on March 16th. Uh, my session's at 9 a.m. I'll be talking about how to pre uh, prevent SQL injection in SQL Server. So if you wanna learn more, check that out. Check out some of my other videos. If you haven't already, please subscribe and I will see you next time. Thanks.